Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to show you how to make a holiday meal for about $50 or less to feed about eight people. Not only are the recipes super easy, but they don't take very much time to put together. Now I did do my price comparisons at Walmart and Aldi, so I highly recommend looking at the cheapest grocery store near you. So let's get started. The first thing I always get in the oven is going to be the turkey. I'm doing an herb roasted turkey this year. It's going to be between $18 to $23 or so, depending on the size of the turkey that you get. So first I like to remove the giblets in the neck and pat it dry and set it in the fridge until I'm ready to prepare it. Then I'm going to finally chop up my thyme, rosemary, sage, and oregano and add that to some avocado oil, but you can use any neutral oil that you have on hand or really any oil at all. Then I'm just going to add some fresh cracked pepper and salt and give that a good mix. And I'm going to slice my onion and my lemon. Those two things are just going to be aromatics to go inside the cavity. So if you don't end up having a bunch of aromatics, that's fine. You can just add the herbs inside, but if you do have any garlic or lemon or onion, you can just add that in as well. I also melted two tablespoons of butter, so I have that ready to go. And I take out my prepared turkey, and that's when I start getting everything all put all over it. So I'm gonna pour my oil and herb mixture on top, and just make sure that I get all the crevices all over the spots that I can see on the turkey, all over the skin, and everywhere that I can see. So then I'm gonna add the butter. Now the butter really adds a lot of flavor and moistens the meat and gets the skin nice and crispy and golden brown. And I'm gonna add some of that butter underneath the skin as well just to really make sure that turkey breast is nice and moist it's a really important step so I don't recommend skipping this the butter is super important for making this turkey taste absolutely delicious after I'm done spreading everything all over the place and making sure I use all of that butter that's when I'll just add my aromatics into the cavity so I'm just gonna add my lemon onions and again I did have a little bit of garlic on hand so I just chopped off the end of the garlic I didn't even bother to peel it and I put it in there with some of the sprigs of some of the herbs that I have left over as well and I'm going to add some underneath in the pan I put three and a half cups of water underneath as well just to make sure nothing burns and just to make sure those aromatics really add a nice flavor to the turkey when it cooks. And instead of using kitchen twine, I found that I can actually just tuck the legs back into the skin here. So that's what I normally do. And then I just tuck the wings behind the bird on the other side, just to make sure that the, the wings don't get burnt. And I'm going to put that in the oven at 475 degrees just for 45 minutes. And this is just going to make sure that that skin gets nice and crispy and golden brown. Then I'm going to make it a little tent. It's going to go camping for a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. And I'm just going to sort of rough up that foil. It helps it just keep a shape a nice easy shape on top and just make sure that it doesn't actually touch the turkey and I'm just going to make sure it gets covered all over there so it doesn't burn the skin I reduced the heat in the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and it's going to take another hour and a half to three and a half hours till it reaches 165 degrees internally then we'll just let it rest 20 minutes before we slice it now this next recipe is my first ever attempt at super simple sweet potatoes. It's going to come out to about $4 and I actually only had two sweet potatoes on hand, but for the recipe, I recommend using three pounds of sweet potatoes. You're just going to peel those and chop them until they're maybe half inch cubes or so. Cover it with water and just let that boil for about 15 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are nice and tender and falling apart. And then we're going to drain the water out and just mash those potatoes, add some butter, a little bit of cinnamon and some brown sugar and I really just eyeballed everything but I did put measurements in the blog post for you so you can see exactly what I used just mash that until it's really really smooth to your liking then what's nice about sweet potato casserole is you can leave it in the oven until you're ready to eat at a low temperature so as long as it's covered then when you're ready to eat you put those little mini marshmallows or large marshmallows that you've cut into quarters put that on top and just let that bake for another five to ten minutes or maybe broil it for a minute and there you go it's all done this next recipe is one of my new favorites. It's macaroni and cheese, but it uses cottage cheese and it comes out to about $4.74 for eight portions. Now, first, I'm just going to start by blending up my cottage cheese, milk, and about half of the shredded cheddar cheese with a little bit of ground mustard, garlic powder, and pepper. And I'm just using a smaller blender because I want it to be really, really smooth. But if you have a really nice blender, you can do it in one big batch. That's totally fine. This is just what works best for me to get it really nice and smooth. Now, if it's not super smooth, that's okay when you cook it you really won't be able to tell the difference I promise so after it's all nice and blended I'm going to add it to a large pan and I'll put that on the stove on medium heat and just kind of warm it up I don't want it to boil because there is a lot of milk in there I don't want it to scorch 
And in the meantime, I am boiling some water and I'm going to add my macaroni noodles and get that started because everything really comes together super fast once I get the sauce in the pan. It really only takes about 20 minutes total from start to finish. Now, once I start seeing a little bit of a simmer, I'm going to turn the heat down and I'm going to add the rest of that shredded cheddar. I did have some white cheddar as well, so I added that because that's what I had on hand. Then I'll add a little bit of the pasta water and that just helps make the sauce really nice and creamy and helps everything really get nice and smooth too. Then once the pasta is cooked, I'll add that in. It's going to look really, really saucy, but don't worry. After you cover it and let it sit for five minutes, it's really going to thicken up quite a bit. And you can also keep some pasta water on hand to sort of thin it out if you need to, if you don't want it to be as thick of a sauce, but it really is absolutely delicious and you're going to love it. Next, I'm just going to make a very simple smashed potato and the total for this comes out to $4.53 for a Eight people again and with gold potatoes I don't really like to take the skin off so I'm just going to take the eyes off with my knife and then sort of chop this in about half inch to one inch pieces or so I'll put that in a pot and cover it with water and add some salt to taste and then I'll bring that to a boil boil that for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the potatoes are falling apart then I'm going to drain the water and I'm going to bring this pot back to the stove and put it on high and I'm just going to try to get rid of some of that water then I'll mash the potatoes with the heat off and add my butter and milk and you could add garlic powder or cheese or bacon or whatever you want to add to this some sour cream or Greek yogurt would be amazing as well but we're just going really basic this time with just butter and milk and again I'm just eyeballing it but I do have some measurements for you in the blog post if you want to see exactly what to use but really just mash it and get it as smooth as you like and add as much milk or butter as you love and next instead of making everything from scratch we're actually going to make stuffing from a box I know but when you're short on time and don't have a lot of hands in the kitchen this is really helpful and I promise it's super delicious if you haven't tried it yet I definitely recommend it now I did get two different boxes because I wanted to let you know which one I thought was better these are both from Aldi the one in the front is the traditional herb stuffing mix and the one in the back is a little bit fancier it's a brioche stuffing mix now my personal preference actually turned out to be just the traditional herb stuffing mix the brioche one in the back there just was a little bit too soft for my liking and a little too sweet I tend to like a savory stuffing so that's my personal opinion and you can try either but at 75 cents a box it's a really great deal and I definitely recommend it I also made a fresh summer salad as well to go with and had some rolls and everything just turned out so delicious and there was plenty of food for everybody and I really hope you enjoy these recipes and I have a bonus recipe for you here too this is just the Knorr spinach dip if you've never tried this before I recommend it it's not my recipe it's from the Knorr recipes on the Knorr website and so you just get that vegetable soup mix if you haven't seen that before it's with the soups at the store and you just have to pick up a little bit of spinach you can just get the frozen spinach or the bag of fresh spinach whatever is cheaper at your store then a can of water chestnuts either the chopped or the sliced but we are going to finely dice them and you do need to get some bread I highly recommend doing a sourdough loaf like this and then just cutting it and making a bowl out of it and then on the top parts you just rip those apart for dipping and then you're going to get some mayo and some sour cream and that's all the ingredients for this super easy appetizer although it does come out to about 12 or 13 dollars altogether depending on where you get the ingredients so it is a little bit spendy but it really is a fantastic kind of showstopper appetizer and I love to serve it every single time at holidays now so all we're going to do is add everything to a bowl and we did cook the spinach and get all of the moisture out beforehand as well and then we added that vegetable soup mix and just give everything a mix and then put it in the refrigerator for about two hours before adding it to your bread bowl and after that it, that's it you just put it all in the bread bowl there and serve it super easy appetizer and again it really only takes like five minutes to put together I mean you really can't beat that for an appetizer that everybody's going to absolutely rave about and ask you where you got the recipe so that's just a little tip from me to you so I hope you love that one too I hope you enjoyed those recipes and I hope you at least got a few budget-friendly ideas to make for your next holiday dinner if you enjoyed this video please give me a little thumbs up it really helps my channel and subscribe to see more videos just like this thank you so much I'll see you next time